and welcome to Belmont Journal. I'm your host, Maribel Carvajal de Salazar. Today we are at the Belmont Food Pantry. Thank you so much, Maribel, for coming here and interviewing us and spending some time here at the Belmont Food Pantry. It's so great to learn more about this amazing resource for our town. Okay. And please share how this, this started. Well, believe it or not, about 1991, I was working over at the St. Joseph's Church, and residents were coming to the rectory asking for help. And we had a bookkeeper there who lived in Wellesley. Wellesley had had their food pantry for like nine years. So I said, well, if Wellesley can have one, we should have one also. So I actually didn't want to have it at St. Joseph's because, ha, 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 everybody would get the joke. I would own it. <laughs> 30 years later, I'm still here. So I um, went and did a search with, through the town. I talked to um, some, uh, you know, the select board, uh, different members, and, you know, we found a spot over at the old um, fire station over on Waverly Square. And it was in the basement, and that's where the, um, the Boy Scouts would meet, and they were no longer using that space. So that became our first home. Um, and we opened our doors on December 5th, 1992. Wow. How many people did you start? We had 16 residents that attended, that came, and our numbers grew slowly. Uh, they were all Belmont residents. The Belmont Food Pantry was for Belmont residents. At that time, during that time period, every um, community had a food pantry, and it was just for their residents. But they would let people who didn't have a food pantry use their food pantry. And now we are at the town hall. How did you get here? Many paths. <laughs> so we ended up. Um, the fire station in about 2005 was um, condemned. Um, if you ever went in the basement, you would see that there was multiple two-by-fours holding up the floor where the fire trucks were in. So they sold that building, and we needed to find a new home. Fortunately, at that time, um, they had done some renovations on the middle school. They had a modular building behind the high school, and that became available, and we were able to move into that building um, for about five years. And then um, the Wellington School, they built a new one. They needed the building for the kindergarten and first graders, so we had to find another home. We ended up at the old light department building. Two years later, when certain people found out that we were all getting sick because the building wasn't a healthy building to be in, and the module building became available again, and we were able to move back to the module building. Then the high school needed the space, and we ended up not having a home, so we spent had to leave there, and we spent a little time um, in the uh, garage, thanks to Wa uh, Paul Tochi and the Waverly um, development, and they let us use their space over the summer until the space at the um, Hope, Mount Hope Church on Lexington Street became available. Um, we were there for several years, and then there was a major situation. We ended up, Patrice had just come on board, and she felt that this was the best space for the food pantry. It's for the Belmont residents, and it should be in a uh, town building, and, that's, and we moved here in February 2018. <laughs> and what makes you wake up every third, second and third day of the week, of the month, right? That you the, come? The first and third. Saturday. What makes you come and wake up and motivate you to do this? Um, the residents and helping out. I mean, while we were getting ready, I had someone who um, stopped by and, you know, I, I was able to assist her. Uh, and, you know, it's just being able to help those who are in need to take care of our, our community, to, you know, do the best we can. It's, it's uh, you know, minor, it's simple, it's non-perishable items. Um, just to fill the cupboard a little bit and make their their money go a little bit further on, you know, where they can buy milk and fresh items that we can't uh, provide because we don't have enough That's space storage. for storage. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And what will you say um, you want to tell the community what is the future that you expect for it? Well, I think I first and foremost is I want to, you know, thank the community for their 100% support for the food pantry over the past 30 years. 
um, when we had the um, major recession in 2008 and we hadn't gotten any food and um, an article was written with bare shelves and we were open it was the article went out on a Thursday we were open that Saturday and I had more residents coming in with food donations and whenever we've put out the call when we had to move at the last minute from the high school over to the um, to you know the garage over by Star Market it was an entire community effort. It was phenomenal how many of the residents came out and helped um, to pack up, to unload, to um, restock, to you know put you know put up the shelves and get get it ready for us to open up on the, the next Saturday. Um, the community has supported us 100% via monetary donations to allow us to um, you know give gift cards during the holiday seasons for Thanksgiving, Christmas, and the spring holiday. And, you know, it's an extra help and, and purchasing food. So the community has just done a tremendous amount of work and support. And the volunteers, gosh, the volunteers have been tremendous. Um, and, you know, that's the other thing is that it's completely run by volunteers. There's no one's paid. Um, we all give our time in so many uh, special ways. Um, and we're always looking for new help. So, you know, for the future, the situation is that we are, our core group is aging out. And we're, um, you know, looking for the younger generation or the, um, you know, families that I know that they, a lot of people have um, busy schedules, but hopefully, you know, others to come and just evolve into stepping in so that we can keep it going. Thank you, Patty, for your work. This is 30 years of hard work. And... I don't think there are words enough to thank you for this. And now for the people that are struggling in our town, what's the process to get on the list? Well, come. I would say that for your very first time, the best time to come is the, the fourth Sunday from 1.30 to 2.30, only because um, there's only like about 35 families or people come on that time. On the two Saturdays, we can have from 60 to 160 people coming. So it's a little bit more overwhelming. The line is longer. It makes it, um, it's just not so impactful coming on, on this, um, the Sunday. Um, and But if you have access to the, our website, which is um, belmontfoodpantry.org, um, we do have a client page where you can uh, print out the um, application form and fill it out and bring it with you. Um, we're just, you know, um, it just helps us to keep track because we have data that we have to keep. So um, we ask everybody to fill an, out an application and they go on the list and then they just come. That's great. And if you had a chance to visit the pantry, this is an amazing organized place. And I love every detail that Patty was sharing with us because it's it's a heart that is in every step of the the whole process. So I am really, really happy to witness this and to be here. I've never been here. Yeah. So this is, this is great. And I want you to invite um, the other two volunteers and helpers that you have. Sure. Um, I, actually, both of them are my uh, are board members, Michael Staub and Lori Graham. Welcome. Michael, please share. How did you get involved with this? Well, I think uh, <laughs> I try to remember how far back it's been. I think it's been close to 15 years that I started with um, one of my sons was doing community service here and was just seeing how interesting it was. And uh, I've been working in the restaurant industry for 30 years and it's something to really give back that people in the, in the industry and in the food world don't really understand the importance of food pantries. And it's been, it's one of those situations with which you really get more out of what you give and um, we've made long, long time friends with many of the clients who've come for years and years. And I think one of the happiest days that I remember here was when one of the clients um, had said to us, kind of in a sotto voice, I don't need to come here anymore because my husband got a job, which was really a wonderful statement and great to hear. Awesome. And Laurie. Can you tell us, how did you get involved? 
I also have been involved for, I think, a little bit over 15 years. I got involved uh, when I was um, the chair of the Youth Commission in Belmont, and what we were looking for then was a regular way for middle schoolers to be able to participate in community service. They don't have quite as many hours that they need to do as the high schoolers, but we started with a once a month, a Tuesday evening, so I would come over and and meet the kids and started working um, that way. Uh, Then I think when I got on the school committee, I kept volunteering. So I've been volunteering for a long time. I have my son, who's in the other room, who's now 32, has been volunteering for about 15 years um, and comes frequently when we're here. So as Michael was saying, it was a great way to be able to meet some people and kind of maintain a relationship with them. There are people that have been coming for a really long time. We know their names. They know our names. They know our kids. They know what's going on with us. And it's a, really, it's a joy to be able to see them so frequently and it was hard during COVID because even though we pre-packed bags and we had people as Patty was saying come drive through they were in their cars we would put things in their trunks but there were majority of people who had the bags dropped off for them at their houses and we didn't see them so there were a lot of people we didn't see for two years I think a lot of those people also weren't able to get out and see other people for two years. Mm-hmm. And that was a real loss, I think, to to the community and sort of this helping community. As Michael said, there are people who have said, you know, I don't need to use it anymore. But they give back. They also help do food drives. We have a lot of food drives that happen that are small, but birthday parties and bat mitzvahs. People will ask for donations for the food pantry. There's food or monetary donations in lieu of gifts. So it really is a community experience. We've got high school kids who graduated, who come back during their vacations. They're in, in college now. They come back and want to be able to continue to help. So it's it's uh, multi-generational. As, as Mike said, he started when his kids were volunteering. Um, we have Parents come with their little kids who become middle schoolers and high schoolers and keep getting involved. So it's, it's, it's been a real joy, and it certainly has been a wonderful experience, and we hope it continues to be able to be here in a place that's warm and safe and dry. Happy and dry. And dry. Uh, yeah. We've been in places where um, you know, the ceilings are this high, where there isn't really running water or bathrooms available for people. So this is gr- a great asset. Um, the town has been able to let us use this space. So I have thank one you. thing to add regarding this is that if you'll notice, there's a lot of choices here. And these are a lot of people who are, you know, who are clients, don't have a lot of choices in life. But here they can get a choice of smooth or creamy, creamy or smooth or chunky peanut butter, and they can ha- have the choice to to select their own food. I think is very important. So I'd like to introduce Martin Guntert. He is our shopper extraordinaire. Welcome, Hi. Martin. Hi. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice Please meet you tell us how did you get involved. Uh, th- I kind of sometimes lose track of how long it's been, but let's say about 10 years ago, um, I used to bring food here, donate food, and kind of just on the quiet, just didn't really meet anybody. But then the more I did that, the more I got involved, started meeting some people, and started asking a lot of questions on how they do things. And I thought I could help. I and do what's, like your, shop, what's you know? your main activity? How do you do it? The Well, it's kind of morphed in. For a while there, I was you know, working on organizing things, but I kind of stepped a little bit back and I focus really on the shopping side, uh, acquiring what you see here, you know, for the most part. Um, we've expanded that we do a lot through the Greater Boston Food Bank now. Certainly for the last two years when the pandemic hit, it was very hard to, to shop in the stores. Stores just didn't have anything, but the food bank was great. Um, but I do go to all the stores that, I, that will, are willing to work with me because when I walk in, uh, I don't buy one or two things, I buy one or two hundred things, you know, and um, you usually order them and they, the managers have to work with me to, to kind of prepare that because it's, it's a little bit of extra work for them to do that. Um, and I'm also very price conscious. I love buying things on sale, which actually is another thing that I'm pretty good at is to save some money here. 
which I think is part of the, the more we can save, the more we can get. And that's so that's nice. actually one of the things that I, I enjoy is actually the, that side. It's like the, when I get the receipt from, in particular right now, Stop and Shop is a place I'm going to a lot, is the bottom number is how much I saved last year. That is something that I'm trying to get up and up and up. So. I, how you see the future of the food pantry? Uh, well, it's increasing, right? The importance of it in, in our town as well as any other town is increasing. And I see that, you know, with the, just at the food bank, because we're going there not every, every month, sometimes twice a month, is that their supplies are shrinking a little bit. Their ability to offer broad spectrum of different foods has come, come down. And I think that's partially due to supply chain, but also due to increased demand. Um, but I think the, you know, there's a lot more outlets that we can tap into, and, and I think you know, we see it from, I mean, Patty knows a little bit more about the, the demand. I think we, this weekend, uh, expecting 130 individual people, which is a big number, you know, much bigger than I expected. And you know, it's, it's, it's overwhelming to, to hear that, but it's also very satisfying to, to be part of something that we can actually deliver that. So I think that the food pantries here and in other places are just an important staple of the, the town and it makes the people in the town feel comfortable. And I think the other side of the, um, the you know, there's a side that needs, but there's also a side that wants to give. So every town has a, a large uh, section of people that want to be donate and, and do things for different charities, and the food pantry is one of those. So I, I was in the next room just now sorting some things that came from the middle school. So that's a big part, and that, I think, is is increasing as well, the, the interest in that and people's ability or, or you know, desire to help. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We have many opportunities to help. You can donate or you can volunteer your time as well. Patty, is there anything else you would like to add? Oh, of course, I'd like to give a shout out to some of my other board members. As you see, as you've, we've done all the, um, the B-roll and you can see all behind me, this doesn't magically, like in the Harry Potter movies, pop up and get on the shelves on its own. Hannah Fisher comes in um, a, every like Tuesday after we're open with her crew and just restocks everything. Because at the end of the day, when we're done on a Saturday, there's nothing on these shelves. And she comes in and goes through, sorts, restocks, and makes sure, make sure that this is all ready for when we're going to be open this Saturday. So she's done a tremendous amount of work. Um, Heather Blake and David Hammond are also on our board, and they are from the Plymouth Congregational Church, and they oversee the fourth Sunday. Uh, their group enables us to be able to open up um, an another day. So we've had, you know, several other core group of people that help out. So Helly Tomford has is on our board and she's helped out a great deal um, gotten us um, connected with the Arlington Food Link where we also receive uh, our bread and, and any other items that we may need you know the random whatever the specialty stuff that they have you know I I can't keep up my heart is going to explode guys <laughs> thank you thank you for your work and Patty tell us how to get involved well the biggest thing is again going to our website BelmontFoodPantry.org, by the way, was developed by two high school students at the Belmont Hill School just recently, so we're in the new age. Um, and on the page is, uh, um, on the website, there's also a volunteer page. And you can click on any of the times that, you know, we've got the first and the third Saturday and the fourth Sunday. You click on that, and that takes you to Sign Up Genius. And that automatically... Um, get to the place where you can choose an opening and come in. I think that um, it's important to do that as a first step uh, because then you get to um, be a part of the community, helping out um, here, helping out the clients, seeing how everything works. And then going from there is, is you know, brainstorming and developing new ideas that we're always open to, you know, to working with. Um, we have limitations, but we, there's still um, other things that we can do. There's, we, uh, the food pantry has never delivered um, to uh, anyone in, in the residence. Everyone comes here. Um, and 
if someone is homebound, they can have somebody else pick up. So we're not, you know, any, you can get anybody from your friend, family, social worker, you know, someone else can pick up for you. Um, you know, but we've had Belmont Helps has been um, taking over and doing some of that for the families that were having delivered during the pandemic and are really homebound. So they've um, been doing that for a couple of families that are um, in town so they continue so that they continue to receive assistance. So there's, you know, going into a little bit more of the evolution of how, what else that we can do um, to expand and to uh, offer more volunteer opportunities. Um, we're at that phase to, you know, start thinking, you know, uh, more into that, but it's, you know, getting these ideas from other people and actually participating in, and not just giving an idea, but I'm going to, this is my idea and this is what I'm going to do to help see it to um, fruitation and then keep it ongoing to, to be self-sustaining, which is, you know, how Belmont Helps has helped us with that. Uh, the food donations are, you know, basically going to our website, sending us an email, letting us know that you're doing a food drive. On the website is also what types of food that we're looking for. Um, you can focus your food drive. We've had um, uh, kids do it for Christmas time. For it, well, okay, it's Jesus' birthday. So let's do cakes and cake mix. Cake mixes, brownie mixes, um, you know, the frosting. Um, summertime, let's focus on, you know, juice boxes and snacks. So school, the same thing, snacks. Wintertime, um, focus on getting uh uh, meals in one and soups and, and you know, so you can you can do theme food drives and then we um, of course take monetary donations how do you do that uh, well we have a P we have a box office uh, it's PO box uh, um, 291 Belmont uh, mass um, we'll take you know any uh, checks and there's also um, on the website is uh, PayPal uh, and you can click in and make a donation that via that way also Great. Thank you so much for your time and for this work that you're doing to the town. That was it, guys. It's our chance to volunteer, to come and help. They are waiting for us. That was it for today. I'm your host, Maribel Carvajal de Salazar. See you next time.